You stretch canvas over wooden frames, frames of any size you care to make. And you make these frames from pieces that you buy at the art supply store, like this. I prefer the bigger sizes. A good size for classical realist paintings is three to three and a half feet tall, like that. And by the way, on these larger size frames, say with sides three feet and up, it's a very good idea to brace those longer sides with a slat across the back like this. You can buy these pieces ready-made at the store at the same time that you buy the sides. Or if you're handy and you've got some extra wood lying around, you can easily make these yourself. A scrap of plywood works fine. You just put a screw in each end here. And that serves to keep these longer sides from eventually bowing under the pressure of the stretched canvas. And as I say, I prefer these larger sizes, but for purposes of this video, we'll stretch canvas over a smaller one, just to save a little time. I keep a lot of different sizes of these around, just so that I can quickly make up any size canvas that I care to. If you're lucky, you have an art supply store nearby that has a good selection of these. I have such a store near me, fortunately. In fact, let's visit that store for a minute and I'll show you all the different sizes of these stretcher frames that are available. In a store like this, you have stretcher bars in all thicknesses and lengths. From very short to sizes taller than I am. So here you can get any thickness, any length. And when you buy your stretcher bars, look them over carefully and make sure they're not warped in different directions. Sometimes they sit here for a while and they bend. If you can get all straight ones, you'll have frames that much better. And be sure when you buy the larger sizes that you also buy the braces that go across the back like that. If you're not fortunate enough to have a store like that nearby, you'll just have to buy your stretcher frame parts out of a catalog. Maybe an online catalog. Now I want you to notice that for any given length of stretcher bar, you can get them in different thicknesses. They're called light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty. Now I personally tend to use medium to heavy all the time because wood being what it is and the way it behaves over the years, the way it can warp and shrink and dry out, I think those problems are minimized when you have a beefier, heavier frame. So I tend to use the thickest size stretcher bars that I can get. And by the way, these wooden slats are called bars, stretcher bars, which always seemed odd to me because to me a bar is a piece of metal, like a jail bar. However, I suppose if this can be a bar, a candy bar, then this piece of wood can be a bar too. Guess I shouldn't quibble. And now that I think about it, there are bars of soap, right? And bar stools and bar girls and salad bars, bar mitzvahs. There's all sorts of bars. In fact, when I was a little kid, I remember a song about Davy Crockett and it said, he killed himself a bar when he was only three. <laughs> it is useful to have a skull around when you're doing portraits to study head structure, but you really should avoid the kind that talk back, like him. I've named him Yorick. But I digress. Excuse me, Yorick. Let's get back on topic here. Notice that these stretcher bars have tongues and grooves so that when you fit them together, the tongue of one side goes into the groove of the other side, and it should be a nice snug fit. And notice also that the back side is flat and the front side has a lip on it. The purpose of that lip is to keep the canvas off of the rest of the stretcher bar. Let me uh, get a piece of canvas and show you. When we stretch canvas across this stretcher bar, the canvas will break off of the lip here and not touch the rest of the wood. 
so that when you're painting and you're brushing and pushing hard on your canvas here, it will not go down and touch the wood, which would make funny marks on your painting. Okay, that can be a frame. You can't eat that, York. You don't even have a stomach. Spit it out. Blech. Good grief. How does he do that without lips? Oh, do let him have his candy bar. Let him have it. 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 It's going to rot your teeth. Good grief. Where were we now? Well, remember that these stretcher bars have a back and a front. So as you lay out your frame, make sure the front sides are up. And then you push the corners together. Now, depending on how these are made, they may fit loosely or they may fit tightly. If they fit too tightly, you may not be able to push them together by hand. It may take a hammer, and it should be some sort of a soft hammer. This is a rubber-headed hammer. This is a dead blow hammer. Same basic thing, but soft hammers won't dent up the wood. Now, you want these corners to meet exactly, not like that, not like that, but precisely. Now you notice I have got the gap closed, but it doesn't meet correctly yet. Can you see? So, when it doesn't meet right, you just hit one side or the other until it does. Now, I've got it, you see? So, you just do that all the way around. Plug the sides together. And tap them into alignment.